Welcome back, Tyrants and Newcomers like to Phoenix Wright Ace Attorney. We'll finally be getting the first trial of the final case, so let's get to it. February 23rd, 934, District Court Defendant Lobby Number 2. <coughs> How did the investigation go yesterday, Mr. Wright? Frankly, frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Just kidding. Frankly, there are still a lot of... Oh, why am I... Why am I speaking like the beer? Frankly, there are still a lot of, uh, gray areas. Or rather, the whole thing is one big gray area. Don't worry about me, no matter what the outcome. I'm ready to accept my fate. I believe in you, sis. Mr. Wright, let me offer you a word of advice. Yes? A defense attorney should never believe their client. The defendant is going to trial because they are suspected of wrongdoing. Never forget that. Miss Sky, you... You remind me a lot of Mia. But there is one decisive difference between you and her. And... And that is... You are not a defense attorney. Ha! I believe it's almost time for the trial. Good luck, Mr. Wright. Yeah, let's begin this crap. My first trial without a Faye helping me. No one's going to bail me out this time. Good God. I'll be alone in there. So I have to discover the truth all by myself. Let's do it, Mr. Wright. I'll be with you the whole world. God forbid. Can you channel spirits, Emma? No? Then shut the freak up. December 23rd, 10 a.m. District Court, courtroom number 9. The bear is back, bitches. Ah, the court is now in session for the trial of Miss Lana Scott. The defense is ready, Your Honor. The prosecution has been ready for a while, Your Honor. Edgeworth? <laughs> Haven't been in court since Edgeworth's trial. It's been a while now. Yes, hasn't it? I hope that personal feelings will not be a part of the proceedings today, Mr. Wright. I will choose the path I think is right, regardless of what those around me might say. The judgment to be made here is in our hands, not those of anyone else. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth, your opening statement, please. The beard and Matt. Chief Prosecutor Lana Skye has committed an unpardonable crime. Not only this, but she was rash enough to commit it in the prosecutor's office lot. Wow, this is much more forceful in person. I suddenly feel like confessing to everything. However, she will now pay for her rashness with her life. Never mind. <laughs> there was a witness to her crime. A professional witness. Professional? Well then, call your first witness, Mr. Edgeworth, or the beard, or the beard will destroy you. The prosecution calls its first witness, uh, at the threat of the beard destroying him, Miss Angel Starr to the stand. The cough-up queen? Sounds anorexic to me. Good God. Hum, haven't I seen you somewhere? <laughs> you ordered... Oh wait, how did, I, how did I do her voice last time? You ordered the caviar lunch, right? Ho ho! Caviar! I've never eaten caviar before! The beard wants some! Give it to me! The judge is really wolfing it down. Om nom nom nom! And as for you, I have a fiesta bowl. Uh, thanks. Will the witness state her name and profession? Ah, and you, sir. Did you order the fingerprint lunchbox? It's too, it's too, is too early for lunch. Your name and profession, please. Well, Your Honor, how does it taste? So this is why everyone raves about caviar. It's so tasty it hurts. The beard says, om nom nom. I always thought caviar would taste like pickled tapioca. What the heck does pickled, pickled tapioca taste like? Your mother. Uh, name, profession, now. Me. Me? The name is Angel Star. Do not, don't go forgetting it. I find myself running Lunchland these days. Is that what you wanted me to say, Mr. Edgeworth? Very well, witness. Please describe the incident to us. The prosecution will wait. I'm not finished eating, and the beard is hungry. Hurry up. Nom, 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 nom. Very well, Mr. Edgeworth. As you know, we usually call in the police to provide a description of the crime. Your Honor, as Mr. Edgeworth has said to the court, I am a professional. Uh-huh. What exactly does that mean? Until two years ago, Miss Angel Starr was a special investigator with the police. She was a first-rate homicide detective. What? Miss Starr was a detective? 
Ah! The bear just came a little. I know who you are, cough up. Cough up queen, angel star, you're on a long time no see. Farewell, you may continue with the description, Miss Star, and somebody get me a napkin. Uh, just who is this lady? If I might have the court's attention over here. Uh, the parking lot of the prosecutor's office is divided into two blocks. A block is for the prosecutor's office personnel. B block is for visitors and clients. A chain divider separates the two blocks. I suppose that's to keep visitors from taking up prosecutor spaces, yes? The crime took place by a car in the back of the A block in the car's trunk. The killer stabbed the victim with a knife and went to drive the body out. Unfortunately for her, there was a witness, and an arrest was made on the spot. And who was this valiant witness? Why, it was me, Your Honor. The beard is aroused by this statement. Witness, did you see the very moment of the crime? Of course, Your Honor. Immediately after that, I apprehended the Chief Prosecutor. Hmm, it seems rather cut and dry, doesn't it? Well, Mr. Wright, uh, I can't agree on principle, Your Honor. It seems that some poor losers are unwilling to accept the truth, Your Honor. Shall I proceed to crush what little hope they have remaining? If you can, then give them your horse, Mr. Oh, the beard demands it, under penalty of death and beard strangulation. Wait, are they talking about me? <laughs> Witnesses account. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver a lunchbox to my boyfriend. When I sensed something, perhaps it was my finely honed detective instincts working. Oh geez, Lana Scott looks scary. Then through a wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor standing next to a garish car. The chief prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Oh, the bear likes that. Oh wait, no he doesn't, that's a murder! Uh, bring your lunchbox to your boyfriend? How touching! And I bet you were, too. Hmm, as you can see, there is no room for doubt. The key point of your testimony seems to be nothing other than the point of the knife which you saw being stabbed at Detective Goodman. So, how does it feel to be so utterly crushed? I, uh, I'm still thinking about that. It's merely a floss rune, Mr. Ray. Is that a Monty Python reference? That is awesome. I like this game more now. Merely a flesh wound, Mr. Wright. Very well, Mr. Wright. You may cross-examine the witness. And please refrain from using any more Monty Python references. <laughs> Go screw yourself. Anyways, witness's account. Let's see here. Somehow I always knew a day like this would come. I was on my way to deliver the lunchbox to my boyfriend when I sent something. Perhaps it was my finally home detective instincts. The wire sends us other blah blah blah. Here we got the press. Press! This boyfriend. He's the detective? Not that boyfriend, the security guard. That, that boyfriend? You have several? Ah, oh, the bear thinks you're a slut. Yes, this boyfriend, that boyfriend, and the other boyfriend. Can't it join? Oh yes, the bear wants that. The bear wants a piece of that. The yet another boyfriend position is still open for applicants. I'll stick with the lunch, thanks. Bear thinks you're a hoe. Alright, not to stop. The judge had to think before replying. Shut up! Smack. Boot of the hat or something. The security guard is ruins in the lot, in A block. It's up on the second level, so you can see everything from there. That would be the room with the security sign. Incidentally, did you bring your lunch boxes by car? Since I'm a visitor now, I parked in B block. Sir, she was in B block when she witnessed the crime. Whoops, ah, oh, crap. I pressed the wrong button. Ah, sorry, be right back. And we're back. Sorry about that. Now let's continue and figure out what the freak this is. You sent something, perhaps it was my- What did you sense? Tell me! You sense something? So you're saying you had a premonition of the murder? It felt like, how would you say, oh yes. It was like the feeling you get when you view a pumpkin chock full of seeds. I have no idea what that means, and neither does the bear. Speaking of a detective's instincts, wasn't the victim Mr. Bruce Goodman also a detective? Yes, well, he was like a young cheese. A uh, young cheese? A pale white cheese, not yet tangy with experience on the streets. <laughs> a greenhorn. Huh. I, of course, am hard, yellow, sharp as a track. And the beard is, too. 
I thought she was stunning too. Shut up, I will throw something at you. In any case, in this lot, I felt something stirring in the back of my mind. Then, through a wire fence, I saw the chief prosecutor now standing next to a garish car. By garish car, you mean... Mr. Edgeworth's car, yes. Mr. Edgeworth? Incidentally, the knife with which the victim was stabbed was also Mr. Edgeworth's, wasn't it? Indeed, it was. Hello, what an odd case this is, and the person you saw, you were sure it was a defendant? I saw her from no further than 30 feet away. I'm certain it was her. If she's telling the truth, we're doomed. Let's just do what we can. Even if we don't have any proof, we can always complain. We're dealing with Edgeworth here. I need better material before I start pressing this. Huh, can you tell us what the suspect was doing when you saw her? Chief Prosecutor was holding a knife in her right hand. Oh, maybe it's a left-handed knife. Let's see. Traces of victims blood, no prints. Um... So, it was her right hand. Is that... House of Blood, one knife wound. Blue Badger panel, parking stub. Goodman's ID. Let's check. What does it say here? A name and ID number, Detective Bruce Goodman, ID, blah, blah, blah. I wonder why they only use numbers for IDs. What else would they use? Letters, silly? That was the reason we have a written language in the first place. True. Detective Bruce Goodman, ID, blah, blah, blah. So, what's up, blah, blah, blah. Only if he was Fred Flintstone. It does have a certain ring to it. Exactly my point! Oh, doesn't take much to amuse her. Wow, Fred Flintstone reference for the win. Okay, anyways. Is there something that debates her handedness, possibly? Maybe the knife. Let's press. Present. What is there to lose? Yep, it's wrong. Darn it. Okay, what if we check the knife? Maybe there's something on it. Like this blood! This must have been the victim's blood, right? Either that or Edgeworth cut himself peeling an apple. What's Edgeworth doing with a knife like this, anyways? Hell, oh, maybe he spends his weekends roughing it in the wild. Edgeworth? In the wild? I think my fruit peeling theory is more likely. Are you kidding? I was picture him as an outdoorsman. Now there's a scary thought. Seriously, okay. So is there anything on this knife that's worth checking by any chance? Doesn't look like it. Okay. Why don't we press this, then? Tell me more about this knife that the suspect was carrying. Well, I'd, I'd say the blade was about 10 centimeters long. Is that right, Mr. Edgeworth? It is your knife, after all. Uh, ahem. Yes, that's about right. Prosecutors are, by nature, well-versed in the locations of a man's vital organs. Sure, it was easier than boiling an egg for my egg salad surprise set. You can't testify as to her ability to kill an egg, I mean a person! Hmm, perhaps a chicken salad set would have been a better metaphor. So the defendant was holding a knife, what then? Then she thrust the pointy tip of the knife into Detective Goodman's chest. Are you sure it was his chest? Because... Let's check the autopsy report after I readjust my screen that I just messed up. Sorry, having some issues here. Okay, that'll have to do. Anyways, let's see. Chest wound, 12 centimeter knife, single stab. Yeah, it's only a flesh wound, Mr. Rods. We can mess with Stop making Monty Python references. Said that before. Anything else? Scientifically speaking, Miss Star's testimony is flawless. Sounds pretty fatal to me. What about the door? Is this out? Is my sister guilty? Let's just keep our heads cool and press the witness a bit, shall we? For some reason, having her panicking next to me makes me calmer. Don't smile like that, so I guess we have to press everything, do we? How did you know? How did you know? Ha! <laughs> nice. I respect the prosecutor's basic appearance of crime, yet their methods are ugly and twisted. Twisted methods will always lead to tragedy. The lunch lady's uninformed opinion is duly noted given that they are used to erasing inconvenient evidence at their whim. Killing off a detective that knew too much is merely an extension of that. Miss Starr, do you have something personal against prosecutors? I felt that I had been found my dream job and I became an investigator, and if I hadn't been laid off by those prosecutors over there, I'd still be one. Laid off? He was fired? To me, prosecutors are nothing more than worms. <sighs> 
Let me tell you, I am a pro, as you know. My testimony is unbiased and flawless. Very well. You may continue, Miss Star. Oh, we already pressed this one, didn't we? Oh, no, we did it last time. Darn it. Well, we read this already. Blah, 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 blah. Hurry up. Ah, uh, okay. Frame rate off. Yes, there we go. That's fine. And yeah, yeah, bop, 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 bop. We know that already. And yeah, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. That's enough. Limit frame rate again. As it was your finally owned detective instinct. Or did we read this? Oh, we read this one already, too. Blah, 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 Next. Whoops. Press. Did we press the garish car? Yes, we did. Okay. So we pressed the garish car. Hmm. Witness! In your testimony, you clearly stated the following. Prosecutors are nothing more than worms. Ergo, you are a biased witness. You might want to keep those silly opinions to yourself in the future, rookie. Huh? Rookie? Unless you're willing to risk the consequences of doubting me. Well, throw you like a fritter, crispy on the outside, chewy on the inside. Oh, that, that was inspiring. The beard wants to go write poetry. I believe I've heard that tagline elsewhere. You should cry plagiarism? I may be relegated to the lowly post of lunch lady, but my instincts are honed. A photograph? You took this? The moment I witnessed the crime, my reflexes took over and snap, I took a picture. In fact, one of my lunch boxes is rigged with a camera. I suppose that's more exciting than just hanging it around your neck. Uh, this is my first time seeing this photograph. You think I'd show it to you, a prosecutor? Think again. My boyfriend works in the photography division of criminal affairs. Well, this is most certainly the defendant. I'm photo editor to the court record. Uh oh, that is unmistakably Lana Sky. So, what was the defendant doing at the time? Holding a knife in her right hand. Bull crap! Yeah, yeah. And you witnessed this? You saw Miss Sky scab the victim with a knife? As I've already said, yes. I swear it on my finest salmon swirl lunch. Oh, I'm sure that is a fine lunch. Om nom nom, says the beard. But isn't that odd? Look at this photograph. This is a photograph you took at the very moment of the crime, is it not? Then why is Miss Sky not holding a knife? Ahem, Mr. Edgeworth, your thoughts? Objection. That was weak. Let's be a little more careful with our evidence, shall we? It is you that needs to be more careful, Mr. Wright. What do you mean, Mr. Edgeworth? This photograph was not taken the moment before the stabbing. This was taken the moment after the stabbing. How could you tell that? Blood splatter. Huh? See the dark crimson stain on the chief prosecutor's coat? It's a black and white photograph. Ah, yes, it's hard to tell, but this could be blood. Well, Mr. Wright, I see no problem here. No problem, said you. Mr. Wright, are you going to just sit there and take that kind of abuse? Ah, you got a better idea? Objection! Wait, that contradicts what the witness said in her testimony, namely that she took the picture the moment you witnessed the crime. Well, it seems I was slightly unclear, my apologies. Uh, th th that's it? If you run out of lunch, you order seconds. Problem solved. If you don't like it, try ordering the jumbo size lunch from the get-go. Good advice. I'm not sure I understood it, but but good advice. I didn't have time to stop her. Prosecutor Sky was cold, calculating like a robot. She killed without pain or remorse. It was a premeditated murder. Premeditated? How do you know? Look at the chief prosecutor's hands in that photograph. Wow, are those gloves? Surgical gloves made of thin rubber, most likely. Why would she have those on? Uh. Who's that? Who's that premeditated? She would not be wearing those gloves. Wow, you are. Aw, snap. Those gloves do seem to tell a tale of premeditation. Premeditated murder has serious events. Witness, I have this here testimony. Do it now, the bear demands it. 
Murder was planned, the rubber gloves prove it. Ah. Maybe we have to press that. Or... Let's see. Why is there blood on the gloves, maybe? Maybe... What about this? What about presenting the knife here? Because there's no blood on the gloves. Right? Aha! I was right! Own. Witness, do you know what this is? Are you trying to test me? I sell box lunches for a living, you know. That's a knife. The knife. The knife that was in Mr. Edgeworth's trunk. Indeed, it is my knife. What's with this case, Herbert Herbert? The bloody murder weapon, a red collar? All belonging to the prosecutor there? A defendant is the chief prosecutor for the death trick, right? Mommy, a prosecutor's bad people? The defense has a request. We ask that the witness provide an accurate testimony. What's that, rookie? In your testimony, you stated that Lana Sky planned this murder. And that's why she was wearing those special gloves. Seems like a natural conclusion to me. The gloves do indicate planning. However, why would she not also prepare the most important thing? The murder weapon! Ah! This knife just happened to be in the trunk of that car. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're going to plan a murder, you don't forget the weapon! My lunch! Order, order, order! Somebody give me that food that's on the ground. The bear is hungry. Great, now the tide is turning in our favor. Great show, Mr. Rat. My sister's as good as fruit. Or not. Jeez, Edgeworth wouldn't go down that easy. Right. I believe the next lunch you'll be eating is Humble Pie! What? What a lame joke! I hope you weren't deluding yourself into thinking that the tide has turned. Not over such a trifling detail. But this shoots a hole in the whole premeditated theory! Bah! The prosecution could care less if it was premeditated or not. The only one who seems to care is that lunch lady over there. The defendant, Lana Sky, murdered a detective with a knife. That is the only thing that the prosecutor need prove, nothing else. Very good, Mr. Prosecutor. I suppose you think you're clever now. But you know as well as I do that she planned on killing him. It was planned. If she wasn't, why would she have been wearing... I believe I'd like to hear your testimony again. Witness, please tell us only what you saw, not what you thought. How dare you! My powers of deduction are not to be underestimated. Really now? Chuh. Angel's deduction. Lana Sky intended to murder Detective Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor had a grudge against the victim. Nothing else could drive that human machine to plunge the knife in again and again. The victim was summoned from the police department to the prosecutor's office. It does sound a lot like premeditation, doesn't it? So if I order pizza, does that mean I'm planning to kill the delivery boy? Uh, yes it does. The beard will get you for that later. In any case, the defense may now cross-examine the witness. Angel's deduction! Alright, let's see here. Honest guy intended to murder Goodman. That's why she called the victim all the way to the prosecutor's office. I'm sure the chief prosecutor held a grudge against the victim. Why do you say that? Tell me about this grudge. What kind of grudge? Well, I wouldn't know that. Of course you don't. That's because she didn't have a grudge. Rookie. I have a lunchbox here. Now, what's inside? How am I supposed to know? See? We agree there's a lunchbox here, but we don't know what's inside. A person's life is like a lunchbox with pretzels, don't you agree? I get it! That's why my lunch was so salty! The band loves pretzels! Oh, no, no. The judge isn't very good with metaphors. The suspect had a grudge against Detective Goodman. Will you tell us your basis for thinking this? It's simple. Nothing else could drive that human machine to punch the knife in again and again. Bullcrap. Wait, again and again? Hold on, hold on, hold on. Contradiction, it was only once, you piece of crap. Ha-ha! You say she stabbed him again and again. But you couldn't have witnessed that! Are you testing me? Then I'll test you! With my moss surprise! Who the freak makes this crap? I'm afraid the moss is growing under our feet as we wait, Miss Star. 
Ha, <laughs> she's pissed, look at her. What do you mean? I shouldn't have to explain this, but take a look. The autopsy report states that death was due to a loss of blood from one stab wound. Aha! You're right! Good show, Mr. Ratchworth. The beard is impressed. Well, how close my hero, really? That's why I'm bending over this desk like this. Have a double double a giggity goop. What about my objection? No one noticed? Well, witness? You got the crime scene set, right? Ah, uh, oh, thanks! I always believed that no one could ever mistake Ketcha for blood. But now I realize that such mistakes are possible. So? You're saying you mistook something for blood? When she lifted her knife, I thought I saw blood in her breast. Splattered blood from her victim! That's why I thought she must have stabbed him at least twice. Then tell us what you saw that you thought was blood. Testify! Her red muffler looked like blood to me. That's how ghastly the whole scene was. I doubt she even had a red muffler. What are those, uh... Let's see here. Can't really see the thing in there. There's gotta be a picture that shows the car or something, right? Parking stub... What does it say? Miles Edward, 1712. Murder took place three minutes after Edward parked his car. If only we saw a couple extra red lights, he wouldn't have been caught up in this whole affair. Goes to show you never know what'll happen when you run a yellow light. Right, okay, anyways. Um, so... Red muffler look like blood, huh? I find that to be bull. Because you couldn't see the red muffler, because you were on the other side of the fence! No? Okay, so then it's this, right? Objection! Yes! Alright! I'm on a roll today! Miss Star, I demand an explanation! Objection! The witness is clearly not so suited for detective work. What? The suspect was not wearing a scarf or muffler of any kind when she stabbed the victim. Wait, muffler. Oh, she didn't mean the car, did she? And you proved it yourself. With this photograph! Huh? But, but that! Th th that can't be! Only a true professional could be so clueless. I'm sure you'll make a good lunch lady, have no fear. Harm! Harsh words, but good! And that just makes the beard more hungry. In the end, Mr. Edgeworth prevails! What was my objection, chop liver? But it was there! A scarf! No, not that, but something red, really! Well now, where were we? The witness has given us an entertaining interlude. Now back to business. What? Very well, witness. Continue your testimony. You saw the crime and apprehended the suspect. Tell us about that. Very well. I do remember some things accurately, at least. Ultimately, we couldn't shake the most important part of her testimony. The most important part? The part where your sister stabs the victim. This next testimony might just be the moment of truth. Yeah. Apprehending the suspect. After the murder, the suspect attempted to run behind a partition off to her side. I quickly caught her, explained her rights to her, and arrested her on the spot. Ah, yes, when I arrested her, she mentioned the muffler. That's what had me confused in my earlier testimony. The chief prosecutor made to escape against Angel Star, resistance is futile. Ugh. You are quite determined about this scarf, aren't you? I strike like a snake and bite like a cobra. That's me, Angel Star. That wasn't a very good metaphor. First of all, Cobra is a kind of snake. Don't bother me with details unless you want to get bitten. Uh, no, no thanks. Note to self, attorney rat gets bitten by a snake. The chief prosecutor tried to resist, but her efforts were in vain. She knocked my hands aside, kicked over an oil drum. Oil drum? Hard to imagine. Oh, she's beautiful, but deadly. A predator to this one. A leopard woman. Rah! Very well, Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, if you will, and we'll have to do it next episode. Rate, comment, subscribe, favorite, because the beard's shot show, and see you guys next time.